Orcas are beautiful creatures. An orca is actually not even a whale. It is a dolphin. In fact, it is the largest species of dolphin that exists on the planet. A resident orca pod is a family-based group. The orcas live together from the day they're born to the day they will pass. One of the things that I found really fascinating about the resident orca pod is that when the season is over, they leave their homes, but none of the scientists know where they go. We're going to meet two scientists, Dr. Paul Spong and Ken Balcom, two individuals whose lives have been dedicated to the betterment of marine life, in particular orcas, two individuals whose styles are completely different. We've just arrived at Fort Hardy, where we're going to meet Dr. Paul Spong and learn about the northern resident orca pods. In this community, which is, occupies the central coast of British Columbia, there are about 230 members. It's called the Northern Resident Community. They occupy a, a pretty big ocean space, thousands of uh, square kilometers of space. There's a huge abundance of food in this space, and yet the population is small. These guys have been here in these local waters for about 10,000 years, probably, like since the last ice age. He is one of many scientists responsible for putting a halt to taking orcas from the wild and preventing them from being shipped to marine parks. He doesn't believe that people should be interacting up close in boats with the orcas, but that we should respect their territory and observe and record them by land-based observation only. The Orca Life Project is very interesting. I uh, use technology to connect uh, people with nature. The technology needs some development before it reaches sort of the optimal capability. Basically what we're trying to do is connect people to nature in real time. Using uh, the remote camera and the internet, we're able to show people what happens. And so we have um, sort of a choice of six different cameras. His specialty is linguistics. So off the coast of Hanson Island, he's placed microphones throughout the bay. He studies the way orcas communicate through clicks and squeaks and how they use sound waves, known as echolocation, to find fish. Strangely enough, what we're doing now is very similar to what we were doing when we first came to Hanson Island. Our objective was to find a place on the shore that we could watch whales from and put a hydrophone in the water and listen to their sounds. And that's pretty much exactly what we're doing now. How many hydrophones do you have in the water now? Uh, there are six of them up and down Johnson Strait, uh, about 50 square kilometers. Orcas are the most powerful predator in the ocean. They have extraordinary physical power. And they literally have the ability to do anything they want to do physically to any, anything else in the ocean, including themselves. And it seems fairly obvious that a long time ago they reached the conclusion that the use of physical force isn't that constructive or effective in terms of managing a society. Orcas live very long lives. The females uh, have uh, opportunities to certainly have many more offspring than they actually do have. So one wonders you know, about whether the fact that there's a low population is something that just happened or whether there's some intent associated with it. We're now leaving Hanson Island and returning to the United States where we'll visit the Southern Orca resident pod. Dr. Ken Balcom is a scientist who is known for discovering that the Navy sonar might be responsible for beaching the whales. His background is in the Navy. I want to welcome you to the Center for Whale Research. Today we're going to explore the life of the southern resident killer whales of San Juan Island. I was a whale biologist before I went into the Navy and then what the Navy did was uh, immerse me and acquaint me with underwater sound. They put a hydrophone in the water and we're getting a little underwater sound. If, if they're out here chatting, we should hear them. They're out there lobtailing, splashing, breaching, carrying on way more active than the northerns. When I was 12, I read this book called Circus Doctor. Mm -hmm. and I wanted to do something with wild animals. I went down to the whaling stations and I thought, now there's a species that needs some study. Our main mission is to document the status of the population. In this case, killer whales, we've done blue whales, fin whales, humpbacks, and beak whales. Document. What's the facts? How many are there? And then let the public and the government know. We started a center for whale research. Every year we have uh, college students or young people volunteer to be staff. 
a lot of them want to be paid, and we tell them, unfortunately, that's not the case, but you can be fed, and you can camp in the yard, and you can meet all these other wonderful people, and you can help study these amazing whales. You know, if I had the money, I'd endow it so that there would always be funding available to have it go beyond my lifetime. Okay, so this is where we keep our Earthwatch teams. This is their house. In the summer, oh, probably 20% of the mornings I wake up and the whales are right off that point coming this way. If you look for about 10 minutes, you give them a time to come to the surface. They're, they spend sometimes seven or eight minutes underwater. In the 60s, the aquariums learned that they could catch and keep these animals in a tank. And there were huge attractions for all the marine parks. And a big industry started in this area, catching them and selling them all over the world. Most of them died within a year or two, but it seemed like there was an unlimited supply. They just kept catching and selling. And uh, by the time that stopped in 1976, there were only 68 left. You can feel his connection, his passion to protect what he believes to be the most sacred creatures on this planet. Dr. Ken Balcom has created a system of recognizing his orcas. He does it by classifying their dorsal fins. Each orca has a unique marking. Take a high resolution picture of the dorsal fin and saddle patch, the gray area. The female generally has a lower fin about two feet tall and it's recurved or triangular, whereas the male's fin grows to about six feet and is uh, usually triangular or even leans forward. There's three main pods in this area, J, K, and L. There's 24 in J right now, 21 in K, and 44 or 45 in L, depending on who's still alive. We've had three new babies this year. But there is none more famous than J1, also known as Ruffles. J pod, it's our most resident pod in the Puget Sound area. J1 is the, the patriarch, so to speak. Actually, for a while, he was the only adult male in the whole population. It says here that there's a female that's estimated to be born in 1911. Right, we estimate she's the mother of J1 because she's traveling like moms do. They say J2 and J1 are always together, and that is the way mothers and their sons and daughters travel, is always together. A bonding that is also functional. All the babies help herd the fish. See, they have to herd fish. It's useful to do that with animals that you know very well, that you've lived with all your life. You know, each knows what the other's going to do in a certain situation. Well, the new babies are born at about uh, 400 pounds, 350, 400, and 8 feet long. And the largest in here is J1. He's uh, probably 26 feet and uh, 16,000 pounds. He's probably 55. He would eat probably uh, 240 pounds of salmon each day. We've been doing this 30 years. And he was one of the most recognizable whales when we started. And he's just gotten even more majestic and recognizable as time goes on. That little stream of water coming off the tip of his fin. Well, the way that you uh, eventually get to know them best and, and time your photography, if nothing else, is by holding your breath as long as they do. And, you know, just sort of getting a sense of their rhythm. I seem to be stuck in a rut of trying to photo identify everybody all the time, but sometimes it's nice just to put the camera down and, and just be there.